The Mercedes AMG GT is an outstanding two-seater sports car. It looks beautiful, it has plenty of power, and it has that AMG roar. But what if you need rear seats? What if you need to throw some people in the back, or you need to put a car seat when you're not on the track? Well, then you have this. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 Mercedes AMG GT53 with four doors. Well, technically, this is called the Mercedes AMG GT four door coupe because, you know, Mercedes Benz likes calling their sedans with a sloping roof line a coupe. The CLA, the CLS, and the AMG GT four door are all classified as coupes on Mercedes Benz's website, which can get a little confusing. By the way, if you're like me and you still consider this to be a sedan, hit that like button. And if this is one of my first videos that you're watching and you like car reviews, consider hitting that subscribe button. So there is a bit of a shakeup going on in Mercedes-Benz's lineup. When the GT four-door made its debut in the US in 2018, it was available in three trim levels. There were two V8 GT63s and one GT53 four-door. But it seems like for 2022, the GT63 is taking a little break, at least on our side of the world. AMG does have the new GT63 e performance that was recently unveiled in Europe. That thing will make north of 630 horsepower and will do zero to 60 in just 2.9 seconds. Here in the US for the 2022 model year, the lineup only consists of the 53 and the 43. The GT53 that I'm testing here makes 429 horsepower. It will do zero to 60 in 4.3, 4.4 seconds, and will keep going to 174 miles an hour. And I don't know if you heard that, but it sounds absolutely amazing. Keep it in Sport Plus mode, and this thing will just wanna keep going and going. Ooh, pops and bangs. But what's crazy is that you won't break your back while going crazy in this thing because it is also very, very comfortable. I absolutely love cars like this. As I've started getting older, I've started falling in love with Grand Tourers with a lot of power and a comfortable ride quality. I recently tested the BMW Alpina B8 and I enjoyed every second of it. And just like the Alpina B8, this thing is absolutely perfect. It looks outstanding, has a very, very luxurious interior, and has impressive performance that will put a smile on your face. So do I recommend buying the AMG GT53 over the competition? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should drop over $102,000 on one of these. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, before I break down the pricing details and show you the exterior and the interior, let me show you some cool and interesting things that you should know about the Mercedes AMG GT four door. And of course, since this is an AMG, we have to hear that exhaust sound. My test model comes with the upgraded AMG Performance exhaust system for $1,850, so it better sound nice. Let's take a listen. And as you can see, there is a rev limiter that only lets you go up to 4,000 RPM, so you can't show off at a traffic light. Next up, one of my favorite things about the AMG GT lineup are the insane amount of buttons in the center console. I think these look really cool. And these aren't just traditional buttons because each of them has a display of what they do. The buttons to the left will let you circle through your drive modes right here. Then you can change your transmission settings, your suspension settings, and your traction settings. On the right, you have your volume control, and then you have your auto stop start button, a button to raise or lower your spoiler, and a button to make your exhaust louder. And if you look here on the steering wheel, you have two dials with tiny screens, and you can control various things from right here, including circling through your drive modes, changing your exhaust sound settings, adjusting your suspension, and much more. Now, I've reviewed many of the newer Mercedes-Benz and AMG models before and have covered a lot of the cool and interesting features you can find in those videos, so I'll link a few of them in the description below. But if you are new to the Benz and AMG world, let me give you a quick rapid fire session covering some of the more important ones. Almost all Mercedes Benz models now come standard with the MBUX infotainment system. You have a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster display, which is gorgeous. You also have a 12.3 inch center display that you can control by touching it. You can also use the touchpad right down here, or you can use a touch capacitive buttons right here on the steering wheel. Or you can simply say, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Turn on my heated seats. I'm switching on the seat heating. Did someone just pass gas in your very expensive AMG? Simply say, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Turn on the air freshener. I'm switching on the air freshener. 
A lot of the new AMG models come standard with or can be had with something called track pace, which lets you create your own lap and track your lap time. And you can even test out your zero to 60 times amongst many other things. Mercedes-Benz has one of the best ambient lighting systems in the luxury segment. And one of the coolest things that I like to geek over is as you increase the temperature, the ambient lights around the vents will turn red. And as you decrease it, they will turn blue. That is really cool. Oh, and check out this AMG lighting display that appears at the bottom of the GT53 four-door at nighttime when you unlock it. All right, let's talk pricing. Pricing for the AMG GT four-door starts at $92,500 for the GT43 and $102,600 for the GT53. As tested here, you're looking at $124,220. Anyway, let's talk about what you get as standard with the AMG GT four-door since it is already so expensive. You start off with a long list of impressive standard features, including the MBUX infotainment system with the center 12.3 inch touchscreen display and this beautiful 12.3 inch digital instrument display. With that, you also get navigation as standard, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which aren't wireless. They're actually wired in this one here. You get dual zone climate control, which yeah, you should at this price tag. You also get heated front seats as standard. This really cool AMG performance steering wheel is standard, which you can change to Napa leather like the one I have here at no extra cost. The ambient lighting system, which is absolutely beautiful, is standard. You get a power tailgate, which yeah, obviously you should. You also get the Burmester sound system as standard. You can upgrade to a more expensive Burmester sound system, but this one's not so bad. And guess what? A wireless charger is standard. And if you don't understand my excitement about the wireless charger being standard, check out my other reviews because I feel very strongly about standard wireless charging. Now my GT53 test model here has over $21,000 worth of options, which is technically the price of another car. So what do we have? Starting with the cheapest to the most expensive, you have the AMG light display, which I showed you earlier, and that costs $250. $350 for the air balance package, which gives you a cabin fragrance, so it smells nice in here. Now both heated and cooled front seats cost an extra $450. Heated rear seats are also optional, which kind of sucks. I don't have them in my test model here. Swapping out the two individual rear seats for the rear bench will cost you an extra $1,000. The warmth and comfort package costs $1,050, but it adds on a heated steering wheel and it also adds on heated front armrests, which is an amazing thing to have during the winter. The upgraded 20 inch AMG wheels cost $1,050. 19-inch wheels are standard. Now, if you want the cabin to be quieter than it already is, you have the acoustic comfort package and that will cost you $1,100. The upgraded front seats right here with the nice massage function cost an additional $1,320. So every time you get a massage, just know that you paid a lot for it. This upgraded black microfiber headliner cost a nice $1,060. I could do without that. You'll pay an extra $1,850 if you want the upgraded AMG performance exhaust system. And if you fancy some driver assist tech, you can add on the driver assistance package for $1,950. Now here's where we get a little rich and famous. You have a fixed panoramic roof for $2,100. Fixed meaning you can't open this. Then you have this upgraded gray and black Napa leather interior, which looks beautiful with some really nice yellow stitching and it costs an extra $2,850. And then this upgraded matte blue Magno paint job will cost you an extra $3,250. And I think it's absolutely worth it because this color looks really nice. But yeah, this isn't even fully loaded. You can keep going well north of $140,000. All right, let's talk horsepower and torque. Power comes from a three liter six cylinder turbocharged engine with EQ boost, and that's good for 429 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque, and that's made it to a nine speed automatic transmission. Again, the 63 is out of the cards for this year, but you also have the option to go for the AMG GT43, which makes 362 horsepower and will do zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. As for the GT53 right here, this will do zero to 60 in just 4.3 seconds, which is pretty impressive. And you have a top speed of 174 miles an hour. Fuel economy wise, you're looking at 19 city and 25 highway, give a 21.1 gallon tank capacity. I'm averaging after a couple days of driving and some idling today, a total of 10.4 miles a gallon, ouch. All right, let's take a look at the exterior design of the Mercedes AMG GT four door coupe. That's right, Mercedes Benz calls this four door a coupe because, you know, the whole sloping roofline thing. And yes, there are three models in the Mercedes Benz lineup that are considered coupes, including this, the CLA, and the CLS. Of course, this is the best looking one of the four door coupes from Mercedes. It is similar in size to the CLS but it looks a lot beefier and way more aggressive. I really like the front end of the GT four door. It looks very bold. I love the large intakes and the AMG grill with the vertical slot just gives this a very mean face. All AMG GT four door models come standard with LED headlamps, LED daytime running lights, 
and really nice looking LED taillights. I love the indicators on the taillights. And while we're admiring the taillights, let's check out the rear design. It's definitely the more luxurious angle of the GT four door, but you can make it look more aggressive by popping up that spoiler. The spoiler will automatically pop up when you hit 87 miles an hour. Honestly, I've been driving this thing with a spoiler up the whole time I've had it because it just looks a lot cooler. But yeah, to me, this is one of the best looking options in this segment. I think it looks better than the Porsche Panamera for sure. Let's check out the cargo capacity really quick. You can pop open the trunk with the kick to open motion thing, but I'm just gonna use a button right down here. Once you get it open, you have a total of 12.7 cubic feet, and then you can lay the rear seats down and have much more space if you want to. And to lay down the rear seats, you can use these buttons right here in the cargo area. Very simple. Let's hop inside the new AMG GT four door because this is a really, really nice place to be. I have to admit that Mercedes Benz's interior design is very impressive. They have been killing it when it comes to the styling of their interiors on their newer models. In my opinion, they definitely have way more personality than Audi, BMW, or even Porsche. There are a lot of swooping lines that make this look very stylish and a solid use of high quality materials throughout this cabin. As for legroom in the back, you're working with 35.5 inches of room back here. It's not that bad, but not that nice either. Now, before I give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy the AMG GT four door over the competition, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have a total of four cup holders, two in the front. You also get an ashtray with it just in case, you know, and you have two in the back in the center armrest that pop out. Not that very sturdy, but hey, you have them. Here are what the keys look like to the AMG GT four door, AMG logo in the front and AMG logo in the back. Pretty nice and solid set of keys right here. Door open and close sound from the outside. Soft closed doors are actually optional from the outside and from the inside. Charging game wise, you have two USB-C ports right there. Also in the front armrest, you have your wireless charger and a USB-A port for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity since they're not wireless. And rear passengers in the back get no USB-C or USB-A ports at all. That is actually optional as a part of a package. That sucks. It is now time for an indicator and horn sound test here with the 2022 Mercedes AMG GT53 four door. That's a long name, indicator first. Same old Benz indicator. Now for the horn sound, lowering the window a little bit. Here we go. Oh yeah. Definitely solid. And now that I've given you a tour of the Mercedes AMG GT53 four door, I'm tired of saying that whole name. Let me give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy one. All right, let's get to it. All right, so first things first, you don't have to drop over $102,000 to get a 429 horsepower Mercedes AMG. You can save yourself about $28,000 and just go for the Mercedes AMG E53, which starts at $75,000, has the same 429 horsepower engine, and will do zero to 60 in the same 4.4 seconds. So do I recommend this over the BMW M850i Grand Coupe? And again, I should be completely honest and say that the 8 Series Grand Coupe is one of my favorite cars at the moment. The M850i Grand Coupe starts at $99,000, just a few grand cheaper than the AMG GT53 right here. However, it makes 523 horsepower and will do zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. You see, BMW is more focused on performance while Mercedes-Benz is focused a little bit more on luxury. The AMG GT53 is beautiful inside out. The interior on this thing is more stylish and feels more luxurious than the one on the M850i. And if that's what you're looking for, the GT53 is a great option. But if you want performance, then the M850i is what you should look at. And if you wanna go for the Porsche Panamera 4S, be my guess, it's a little bit quicker, costs about $4,000 more. Of course, you also get to tell people that you drive a Porsche, but for me, between the Panamera 4S and this, I would pick this, either way. Thanks for watching, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, my handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you in the next one, take care. Peace, that sun has been brutal all day, just in my face. You don't know how many times I've reshot all these shots. But hey, that's what you gotta do sometimes.